Okay. So. I'm scared. Oh. So here we are. I'm scamming. <laughs> All right. So. To to keep with the mood, I even I bought coffee today. So I have some French vanilla coffee with me while we watch Coffeezilla, so that I could fit in. It's still very hot. I can't drink it yet, but it smells awesome. So. I'm ready for it. But until then, here we have uh, Coffeezilla's new video. Um, I scammed this influencer so he couldn't scam you. This is gonna be good. This is, this is, I mean, I, I've only seen Coffeezilla's uh, Logan Paul videos so far. That's how I found him. So I'm excited to see what else he makes. And I wouldn't mind checking out more of his videos too. I mean, he he makes very, very, very well produced excuse me very well produced and very like highly researched videos oh my god excuse me so let's see how this one is let me know if the audio is too like low or high or whatever i'm scamming a scammer today but i won't know if my plan works until the end of this video because okay. as i'm recording it my plan hasn't really come together yet so we'll find out what happens but Win or lose, the point of this video is to tackle one of my biggest pet peeves, which is scammers calling out other scammers to make themselves look good. I guess the logic is, oh, I can't scam you. I call out scams. Yeah, and of course. what kills me is that it actually works. People fall for this all the time, and it drives me crazy. So it's like some of those people that are like, oh, I'm such a nice person. Look, look, look at all these, all these tweets I'm making. I'm so positive and uplifting. Look at me. Look at me uplifting my community. I'm such a good person. Oh my god, I can do no fucking wrong. Like, yeah, I'm sure some of them are alright people, but like, if they're really put, like, like, I am such a good person. You don't need to say that. You just need to be a good person. Positive people? Yeah, Sean. Okay, there's there's being positive and then there's being like something else. But anyways. So today I want to flip the script on one of these people. We live in a hellhole be miserable. Have a scammer <laughs> call themselves out. It's like inception but for con men. We could call it conception. Dylan Dennis is an MMA fighter famous for two things, cage fighting and not fighting KSI. Huh. But on December 23rd, he decided to be famous for a third thing, calling out the scammers. He writes in a tweet, damn, Logan Paul is a scumbag. Feel bad for everyone he scammed. Of course. I bet he's done nothing wrong. I was gonna really disagree with this, so the likes rolled in. But what Dylan doesn't tell you is he also has a history of scamming people on Twitter. And what Dylan didn't know is that there was a detective watching him. That detective was not me, actually. I wish it was me. It was my buddy Zach XBT on Twitter who said, Damn, Dylan Dennis is a scumbag. Feel bad for everyone he scammed. And then Zach showed some tweets of Dylan promoting obvious scams, which then rug pulled. Now, I was gonna kind of leave it there, a little nice Twitter dunk, but oh. it got me thinking. You know, deleted scam tweets I knew. are the internet cool. equivalent of you get? roaches in your house. In both cases, if you see more than one of them, there's a lot more you don't see. Yep. So I reached back out to Zach and I said, hey, good tweet, but I wanna find out how many scams exactly this guy has promoted. So Zach started digging through the garbage bin of deleted <laughs> tweets and we found out pretty quick there were a lot more, but I realized it was going to take Zach some time to get the results we needed. So we're going to go back to him at the end of this video. But right now, I had a bigger problem, which is that to show this full scheme, I needed not only the number of scam tweets, I also needed to know how much he got paid for all this stuff, uh, for these scams he promoted. So even after looking through the blockchain, I couldn't find any, anything. So I needed a social engineering approach to figure out how much he got paid. I wanted okay. to trick Dylan into giving me the amount. The rough idea was to approach Dylan and say, hey, I created this dumb NFT project that's completely fake. How much would it cost for you to promote it? He gives me an answer and I have my price. But of course I realized he actually knows who I am because he's tweeting about my Crypto Zeus series. Yeah. I can't contact him directly about this. I needed kind of someone who could <clears throat> reach out on my behalf, who like looked like he would be serious about selling you an NFT collection. And that's when I thought of my buddy, Oompaville. This is a guy who's actually really sweet in real life, but his particular profile on Twitter 
says NFT salesman 100%. Like Yo, you're my friend, but but you look kind of like a scumbag. I need your help. That's 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 great. Oh, I love crested geckos. They're good. This dude literally is just like, "Hey, you look like a scum fuck." Want to work on a video? That's great. To be fair, I often dress like uh like I exist only for heroin, so understandable. So I contacted him to contact Dylan on my behalf. And I told him to say, hi, Dylan, I'm launching a crypto NFT platform called sour.gg and was wondering what your rate is for an Instagram story post or Twitter post for promotion. We can provide all the marketing copy. Please let me know as we're trying to launch relatively soon. Now Does Craigslist have a scumbag section? Yeah, the whole site. I don't get the the appeal of NFTs either. That's a whole other video too. Now, I guess as we wait for him to respond, let me explain that sour.gg, that website is not a real crypto NFT platform. Nothing in this video is a crypto or real NFT. So you cannot buy crypto from this. I want to be super clear as we talk Cover about the this. bases. Not only that, the actual website we sent him to is just a landing page for one of Oompa's candy businesses but it kind of looks a little NFT like they're like there's like this little purple monkey thing in the corner and so I thought it would fool Dylan and I was actually right because Dylan immediately responds with want to do a tweet and then I love this next part what is it I like the order of that you know like let <laughs> he's he smelled some money and he's like money <laughs> what do I need to do <laughs> what do I need to do <laughs> to get this money <laughs> tell me I'll do it promote it and then underneath it what am i promoting uh and it's at this point i realized that this is not only my chance to find out how much dylan gets paid for all these scam promotions it's also my chance to test dylan dennis he says logan paul is so bad he feels so bad for the victims but let's see if he's so different so i decided that this fake nft project i would be pitching him was going to be just like crypto zoo in fact, to do this, I basically copied almost word for word CryptoZoo's white paper saying the following. Sour.gg may appear to solely function as an NFT collection, but it's much, much more. Sour allows users to earn sweet tokens that are openly traded via a yield that is based on the rarity of a given candy NFT. Oh my God. But just in case you didn't think it was obvious enough, I decided to leave Dylan one last hint. I signed off with a nonsense statement saying, quote, Come obtain fun friends, enter exciting zones, indescribably lush. Look out, adventurer. Now, this is a sentence which means nothing unless you lay it out by the first letter of every word. And then it spells... Oh, so, fuck! So, uh, don't say I didn't warn... This guy's leaving all sorts of cryptic little things in here. This dude is just laughing in his face. He's, he's doing every single thing so that when this guy looks back, he's going to be like, Oh, fuck. I w oh, what? <laughs> what the hell, man? This dude's just fucking leaving little cryptograms and everything, isn't he? <laughs> Damn, he's gonna f he's gonna fuck this guy. I can already see it happening. That's an odd way to describe dressing comfortable. I mean, it's a good way to describe it. Comfy as hell. Living for comfort. It may appear like a scam, but I think you promise it isn't. Don't worry, dude. You're getting paid. It's all good. <laughs> and obviously, even if I hadn't warned him, Dylan Danis surely wouldn't promote a crypto zoo project, right? Of course not. Because he's, you know, he feels too bad for the victims. He wouldn't promote something nearly identical. Oh, wait. He said, sounds dope. And then ETH? Question mark? And at this point, I'm just a little surprised by how easy this all is. Zero due diligence is being done here. We have created the weakest facade possible for an NFT scam, and he's just immediately on board. Of course, uh, for a price. I mean, that is the one thing he actually did care about, which might not surprise Yeah, oh, well, yeah, and money. And the one Duh. thing he actually pushed back on, because I told him I wanted to pay him $1,000, and he said, that's pretty low for me. So we negotiated Ooh. and landed on a payment rate of $5,000 for a 24-hour post about our NFT project, which does not exist. After we settled on that- That's a lot of money. Payment information. $5,000 for tw just tweeting, just to leave it up for 24 hours and then he can delete it. What 
the heck? Oh my god. That's crazy. What the <laughs> That's a lot of money for no work. Oh my god, all you have to do is tweet something. Like, hey, this thing is cool. Add link. Holy shit. Which really established a lot for us. We got answers to most of our questions. First, how much he gets paid per post. And we also got an Ethereum address from Dylan, which I hoped was going to link to all his other payments, but I didn't give him enough credit here. Dylan gave us a brand new crypto wallet just Smart. for this transaction. Smart. Which seems to imply that he probably makes new wallets for every new deal he does, which Smart. is pretty shrewd. And at this point, I realized I had a choice to make. I could take what I learned, present it to you guys, and stop this little charade I had. That wouldn't be Dylan as exciting, my though. Video. And Dylan would just keep doing this because his fans wouldn't know. Or I could try to teach him and his fans a lesson in a bit of a different way. Oh. Which is actually pay Dylan to post a link to our fake NFT project. But the twist would be Definitely not as a scam. soon as he posts that link, it will become a website dedicated to every scam tweet Dylan Dennis has ever done. And remember that this website would be linked by Dylan Dennis himself to all of his fans, directly showing them proof that he'd scammed them multiple times. And we'll figure out how many times again in just a second. But I first want to say, I thought about this a while because this plan has its own risks. I mean, the number one risk is that Dylan just doesn't post and steals my money. And then the number two risk is, well, what if he finds out we duped him and then immediately deletes everything? We don't get our money's worth. So to remedy that, because I really wanted to do this plan, was to structure the payment so that I paid him $1,000 up front, but didn't pay him the rest until he kept the tweet for certain periods of time. And to my surprise, he agreed to the terms. And Holy moly. 5K, geez, that's Kardashian level promotion? No. No, Kim Kardashian, for a post that'll go up for a day, they'll pay her half a million dollars. I've seen the numbers. That's like, she would... She wouldn't even know that she got a $5,000 offer because her manager would just laugh and delete it. This is, this is, let's see what happens next. And so this is where I'm going to leave things with him. At this point, I have a lot of things to do before Friday, which is the day I told him this whole fake thing is launching. So I'm going to go do that and go get prepared for Friday. I will see you guys then. All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you slept well. Uh, I didn't sleep much at all. We're working really hard to get this whole thing figured out. So I'm just in the apartment right here, and uh, we're going to just get ready together here. Uh, this $10 million dollar studio. Guys, we don't have time at the studio to get it all done, so I've got to prepare you here. Let me just set the stage for you, though, for what's happened since I last recorded. Number one, we created SoursNFT.com which is a, our actual fake landing page for the NFT project. It's got all this <clears throat> cute Candyland uh, fake NFT. See, like, okay, I'm not going to lie. Why would anybody spend money on, like, this as an NFT? Like, this is kind of cool, but, like, like, why, why would you spend money on this as an NFT? Why would anybody spend money on an NFT? The only people making money off of NFTs is the people making NFTs. If you buy an NFT, just consider that money thrown in the trash. Trading cards, but less cool. Yeah, but then you don't even... Excuse me. You don't even have a physical trading card. Like, I've got I've got Pokemon cards. But, like, I've, I have a PSA 10 uh, Mewtwo in a test tube card. I bought it for, like, 150 bucks. That, I feel, was very worth it. That I thought was very, very worth it. I have a physical thing from one of my favorite movies of all time, a really, really cool card. I appreciate it's it, it's it's a physical thing. This is just like <laughs> like it's just like I could screenshot this right now and have this image. Like, okay, you own the rights to it, but like, damn, I don't know. I uh, honestly I just I just feel like all NFTs are just a waste of money. They'll sell me a crate of invisible Beanie Babies for three bucks? Oh. What if you had an electronic code that certified you own it? <laughs> Damn. Damn. I don't know, man. Oh, that's... That's crazy. That's crazy. 
yeah, let me just let me just own this really ugly uh like monkey picture. Damn, man. I'm doing so well. Tees that don't exist. Now the idea is this is what he's initially going to promote. And then I also created our little uh, switcheroo website, which is just a website with all his uh, previous transgressions. Now, I did talk to some people who were a bit concerned that maybe I hadn't fully been transparent with Dylan. That maybe I should be more transparent with Dylan about what's going on. Oh boy. So he doesn't say I, I trapped him in this whole thing. Entrapment, so yeah. What I decided to do just to make sure we cover our bases here is I drew up a contract for Dylan to sign before this whole thing goes live. I'm going to be sending it to him. And in it, I lay the whole thing out. And this is what I meant by headwinds. This Wait. is where he probably will catch us. Because in black and white, I lay out our whole scheme right in front of him. So it literally says like, you're going to be the butt of the joke. It says people aren't doing due diligence. It says that we're going to be switching the website to show his prior promotions. So we lay out the whole thing there. And what we're really banking on is they're going to get him to sign a fucking terms of service that literally says they're going to expose him for scamming. How much you want to bet doesn't read it, just signs it, says, OK, bro, let's do it. I swear to God, <laughs> clearly his Twitter got hacked. Yeah, oh my God. They're literally making him sign a paper that's like, by the way, we're exposing you for being a scammer. <laughs> and you're, you're an idiot. <laughs> Yo, they literally just spilled out like, hold on. Where is it? <clears throat> uh, da, da, da. uh, we be the tweets. Can we the tweets on this page? Is there anything here? Uh, that's a lot of words. I think I'm just gonna skip back on ahead. Still, though, oh my god, like it probably wasn't even an insanely long terms of service either. No, if I was, if I was getting paid. No, am, am I the only autistic idiot that actually pretty much sits and reads through the terms of service of, like, everything that I do? I might be the only person on the planet that actually reads the terms of service. Especially for something weird. Okay. Yep. I, you know, I kind of already figured I'm the only person on the planet that actually reads the terms of service, but I actually, I'm one of those weirdos that likes legalese. I enjoy reading through it and, uh, interpreting it. Life's too short to read the terms and service. I weasel my way out of it when it comes- well, yeah, I got a lawyer too, but... I don't know, if there's just some weird thing I'm signing up for that's not, like, YouTube, Twitter or whatever, I'm gonna I'm gonna at least sift to the important parts of the terms of service. Every time. If they're like because like there's a lot of there's a lot of sites out there that are like, oh by the way, we own everything you upload. Like it's shit like that. You know, it's like I don't I don't I don't want that. There there are really there's a lot of stuff out there that I just I don't trust it. I don't trust what these sites are doing. You read the terms of service? That I'm not the only one. Thank you, Static. Apple makes me sign agreements like every three months to keep using iTunes. I haven't used iTunes in so long. Uh, I don't have a lawyer. I just hope it doesn't come to bite me in a way. <laughs> See, I'm a quick reader, so. I just click accept. Hell, I just accepted for Burger King. They could probably steal my organs legally without me knowing. You know what? Fair enough. And you know what? You signed it, so get fucked, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Every... Discord literally has that. Yeah, I know. But I don't really post uh, much to Discord. You know what I do on Discord? I talk with people and I share, like, YouTube videos. So, like, with that, I don't care. I'm not uploading content to Discord. You know? 
Depends on what I'm doing. Prior promotions. So we lay out the whole thing there and what we're really banking on is he's not going to read any of this. He's just going to see money and just sign it, which is the whole point of this entire thing. So I, I think it fits. Uh, hopefully we don't end up sabotaging our own project by double checking, you know, covering our bases here. But either way, that's what's going on. Also, Zach XBT finished finding all the scams of this guy. So we're going to go back to the studio and check those out. <clears throat> All right, I'm back. And we have the results from Zach XBT. He found over 20 projects that Dylan promoted and then tried deleting where many of them were rug pulls and scams. It was at this Way point- back machine. Gave up looking for more because there were so many. <laughs> so we added those to the website, but I'm sure many of you are also curious about what's going on with Dylan Dennis. So we're gonna go check back in with our liaison Oompa because at this point, the whole thing is set up and it's all just resting on whether he does any due diligence or not. Let's see what happens. Tell us where we're at with Dylan. So he seems to have taken the bait. There's one final step. Obviously, we have to get him to uh, to make the tweet. You just sent ten dollars to him, right? Just to yeah. Uh, I wanted to bait, bait him so that we can send the contract, and he's gonna be like waiting for the money. What now? I mean, is, is he responding? He said sounds good, and then shortly after he said got it to saying that he he got the ten dollars we sent as a test for the oh, okay for his transaction. All right. Now comes the actual moment of truth. We we're about to send the contract. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! Sending it. All right, and then I'm sending the drive link. I mean, we've sent the contract now. We're just waiting. We're literally waiting. Dylan. 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 <laughs> Dylan. 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 Oh, I oh. agree, bro. Oh, I agree. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen. He oh agreed. my God. And you might notice that we weren't actually able to use DocuSign and get his signature because it was experiencing outages at the moment, the actual website, but we were able to just have him do a written agreement in DMs. Oh and my God. Terms. And although it was very shocking that he actually, oh. <laughs> to be honest, it was here that the pressure really ramped up because at this point I paid Dylan a thousand dollars and now we're just waiting for him to post. And I'm really worried that what if he reads the document in that time and realizes what's going on? But that's when Dylan gave us a lucky break, but also gave us a few curveballs. Okay, big news, boys. A little update ahead of schedule. I, by the way, my heart, like, I cannot take this. I was already telling Upa, I was like, we have to just go forward with this because I'm not ready. I cannot take all the suspense. And Dylan texted us, hey, should I just go ahead and tweet? So we're just going to say yes. Go ahead and tweet. Just refreshing now, I guess. See what he says. There's been so much work that goes into this. You guys didn't see this off camera. Dylan starts talking about where's your community? So we have to whip up this community from nowhere. Our community doesn't exist. We had to create a Twitter profile. We had to buy a bunch of botted followers. An hour ago, it didn't exist. I don't think I've ever been so excited about something in my life. Please, dude. Come on, Dylan. He tweeted it. <laughs> I can't believe he did it. He actually did it. He just tweeted it. What an idiot. What? He, I can't believe it. What can I say? He promoted a tweet which literally spells out in first letters the word scam. I hope this has been highly educational for you guys that most of these influencers do zero work vetting these projects, contracts, and NFTs. If you enjoyed our work, please consider becoming a patron. High effort. Oh my God. Like this takes a long time. That's incredible. Setup, but I think you'll agree it's worth it. I also want to give a big thanks to both Oompaville and Zach XBT who helped me pull this off. Please go follow them um, because they're helping us get to the point where influencers will wonder when they take these deals in the future, am I agreeing to be the butt of a joke? And of course, the answer to that question when you're shilling NFTs is always yes. So anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Hold on. The next one. When asked for comment on this story, Dylan Dennis said the following. Complete lie. He changed the website completely and lied about the project that he was describing. Literally completely changed the original website, sent or deleted it.
When asked about the contract he signed, laying out the details of what happened, Dylan Dennis did not respond further for comment. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, oh, that's gotta feel so bad. That's gotta feel so fucking bad. Oh my god. Damn. That's insane. That's crazy. That's so funny. Man. You really just made him, like, shit in his own bed, huh? That is... That's something else. That is... That is intense. Coffeezilla, just up in the bar for content. If any of you guys can I mean, it's not like he needs my help, but I feel like it's appropriate for me to at least post the link to the video. Go like it if you haven't already and like leave it on so he gets the watch time and stuff. Dude, he hey Monty, uh, that it's literally like <laughs> the dude signed a contract that said, hey, we're exposing you and treating you as a fucking joke. Sign if you agree. And he fucking signed it. Because he's not going to read that. $5,000? Hell no. You can't pay me $5,000 to read. The hell are you talking about? <laughs> I read them if it's something I'm not familiar with. I read the important parts and don't really agree too much online. But all the terms of service has some weird parts so that could be used to exploit its customers if it's from a shady- Yeah, if it's from some weird ass site. I don't like signing up to random sites. I hate it. I don't like it. If they want me to agree to a bunch of stuff or like give personal information, I don't usually, I don't usually uh, comply. Imagine scamming people and not having a lawyer for real. Well, I mean, I mean, the lawyer would probably charge like a thousand dollars just to read through it and be like, yeah, this is a scam or no, this isn't a scam or you should do this or you shouldn't do that. So he's like, ah, I'm just going to take all the five grand. This is easy money. Easy peasy money. I don't know how to read. Send me money to go back to school, please. Fair enough. I use my cousin Vinny. <laughs> my cousin Vinny. He knows a guy. He can get you what you need. Damn. That was brutal. That was brutal. Hey, 1.8 million views one day ago. Go Coffeezilla. Fantastic. Good for you. That was a great video. That was- that- I couldn't do this. This is like anxiety inducing. So good on them for doing this because there's no way in hell that I would actually be able to like do this. <laughs>